and we're live. Hello, everybody. This is your friendly neighborhood, Leo. And uh, today I want to talk about uh, how to model fire, flamethrower. Uh, and I have uh, I found this uh, picture on Google Images. Uh, and just, there's a lot of really, really nice uh, references over there. Uh, what I really like about this picture is that it's showing us a couple of very um, interesting and important things about uh, the way fire behaves. First of all, it's important to remember that uh, fire, while it is emitting uh, light of its own, it is actually particles of matter, right? It is, it is gas. It is gas. It is particles of matter, and you can actually see this very clearly here because fire does cast a shadow if it's against the sun because it's blocking the sunlight, while these particles emit their own light and heat right um and this is important to remember because uh, uh this flamethrower you know it's got all this pressurized gas in here and as it's emitting it uh it's it's coming out and it's coming out very fast because of the pressure but as it pushes and uh, pushes out and meets air resistance and itself it kind of pulls out and slows down as as it loses that kinetic energy uh going forward right and uh it's just something that's really important to remember when you have um when you're doing something like this like a flamethrower or you know if you're doing fantasy like a dragon that's breathing fire uh in this way right and even when fire uh just goes up uh naturally because it's lighter and hotter than uh the, than the normal air uh, particles, right? Uh, it's still kind of weaving and dancing through the atmosphere and through uh, through air currents and all that stuff. So it's just something to, important to uh, observe. Uh, because of this resistance, we can really simplify this to a lot of spheres, right? There's a lot of spheres, and then we can have a few licks of flame here and there. Um, when it comes to video games and animation, uh, particle effects would normally take care of that. Uh, when we're doing, uh, when we're attempting to do fire and sculpting, again, we want to kind of simplify and stylize it in whatever way uh, we can. Uh, this is very important to uh, go and look for different collectibles, maybe that have fire, and see how they stylize that. Um, I really like kind of looking at it as again a bunch of spheres. And, uh, you know, give it the kind of hair-like kind of waves and twirls and all of that stuff, okay? So uh, this is kind of what we're going to use for a little bit of inspiration, but just kind of to notice the cone. And as that energy and as that, those particles slow down, they, um, they start also to travel upwards, right? Uh, okay, so uh, we're going over here to ZBrush. So we're just, uh, we just started with a basic uh, polysphere. Change that material to basic material, not that it really matters uh, for something like this. Um, okay, so we have a polysphere. Let's see, let's want to make sure we can actually sculpt on this. We can, okay, if you can't, you know, just convert it to a uh, polymesh 3D right here. All right, so let's start by just making the sphere a lot smaller. This is going to be closer to the point of origin. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to hold control. Move this, kind of duplicate it. Oops. Let's do this is facing forward right here. So let's do the side. Let's have it go that way. So, and, uh, I hit X because I have symmetry on. So now symmetry off. So hold Control, duplicate, make it a little bit larger, a little bit kind of off over here, and then duplicate again. Bring that. Over here, make it a little bit larger. And uh, I'll just bring it down. We'll have a little bit of a kind of waviness to it. Duplicate again. Push it a little bit forward. Make it a little bit larger over here. Like so. And then unmask everything. And we can use this as a starting point because now we can duplicate all of this. Scale this up like so. Get a little bit of that going on. And then we can do that again. Uh, hold Control, Duplicate. Let's uh, rotate this so there isn't really like an obvious repeating pattern. And see how those uh, spheres kind of start uh, merging into each other. Which is exactly what we want. Something like this. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this again, bring it 
this way this time. Make it smaller. I'll rotate this a little bit on this axis. Something like this. And you already start to kind of get a sense of this energy over here, right? Um, so it's good to start. Now we're going to duplicate it one more time. And this time we're going to make it smaller and we're going to stretch it this way, even smaller. Just so that we have uh, this kind of energy feeling of uh, the particulates kind of coming out really, uh, really fast. Something like this. And it already kind of looks like a, you know, underwater torpedo with the bubbles, you know, or, or, or smoke. If this is, this is like a missile, right? And it's the same idea, right? Where you have all this energy going this way, whether it's uh, being ejected this way uh, through a, a dragon breathing flames or a flamethrower, right? Or, or, um, or some sort of a missile or something going that opposite direction and injecting all these particulates in this way. Um, it's probably a good starting point. What I want to do... Now, the, the tricky part really is going to be making the flames feel good on this end, because over here it's already kind of feeling not too bad, not too shabby. I don't mind this. Um, so let's see how we're going to approach this. So, uh, this is uh, going to be a good foundation for it. So we're going to go ahead and hit, um, Dynamesh just to kind of weld it a little bit. Um, excuse me. We'll keep it pretty low poly at first because we don't want to have those super, uh, super sharp kind of seams over here. Just want it to feel like, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, we're going to, uh, <laughs> geometry, Dynamesh is going to be right here. This is at 64. Mm, I think 64 is going to be a little low. Yeah, this is too low. Uh, I want, I still want to keep a little bit of it. So let's give it at, let's put it at 128. And that's probably fine. I'll give it a little bit more. 256. Sure. Sure, that's fine. Uh, let's go over to deformation. Uh, let's see if smooth gives us a little bit of something. Uh, not quite enough. Let's do polish. Polish is going to give us a little bit more, which I like that. I do like that. Okay, so uh, in terms of uh, the, the next uh, licks of a flame, uh, there can be a couple uh, interesting approaches that we can take. And um, for section two, this will be our introduction to right here, uh, Sculptris Pro mode. Uh, Sculptris uh, was a different program that was uh, purchased by uh, Pixelogic, if I remember correctly, and uh, the main uh, interesting thing about it was that uh, it created new topology based on your sculpting rather than having to dynamesh it all the time. Uh, this is really useful for a fast concept or for something that's really kind of loose and abstract and you just want to um, prototype things fast and explore shapes fast. It's not going to give you a very clean topology, right? Um, but it is uh, useful to keep that flow of the art going. Uh, let's go ahead and duplicate this one. I'm going to hide the previous one, and uh, I'm going to activate Sculptress Pro mode. Uh, main thing that you'll notice is that the brush is now um, purple. That That is basically the program, all, in case you didn't notice it here, that's the program telling you, hey, Sculptress Pro mode is on. It's going to modify this topology as you sculpt on it, okay? And likewise, when you hold Shift to go to Blur, it is now orange right if you remember the normal colors for the brush is uh red and blue for uh for the smooth right but with sculptress mode uh it's purple and orange when you're smoothing okay and here i'm gonna demonstrate actually right here 
uh, so shift F for the topology clay buildup is going to be fine um, something else to remember is that Sculptures Pro mode does not support all of the brushes so some some of the brushes you'll notice this will be grayed out because it's not gonna give you that, that functionality but when you see a uh, gray um, purple like this it means that it works so uh, off the bat let's do some sculpting just basic one and go to shift F okay and you notice that it created topology where, new topology where it felt it needed it and uh, it does so based on the brush size so if I have a really big brush it's gonna create you know less dense topology right and control Z and if I have a very small brush it's going to create much more densely packed to new topology and you see how it's doing that on the fly where it needs it right see that that's with Sculptress Pro mode and back here you know it's not the cleanest looking topology but it does give you that extra detail whereas if it was off and i was using a very small brush you know you would just see how pixelated that looks in comparison because it's just manipulating the vertices that are already there versus creating new ones so uh so that's that uh for the sculptress pro introduction uh one thing that's very uh cool about it is that um if you notice uh bmv the move brush bmv see this is basically grayed out it went back to red because it doesn't support it but one brush that it does support is the snake hook brush b s h and i'll show you what it does without sculptress pro mode first all right it just kind of creates and pulls the topology along with it but as you have not enough topology it doesn't look that great right but with sculptress pro mode notice how he tries to create this topology as it goes along and you can already tell this is going to be very cool for things like you know uh liquid and smoke and fire and stuff like that and from here it's just about uh your own ability um to uh to stylize these things i'm going to use a big brush and let me just kind of simplify a lot of this topology because this is going to be a separate mesh than uh, this previous one, if you remember. So let's just kind of clean this out. I don't want a lot going on over there because it's going to be taken care of by this uh, one. Let me get this other side as well. Bop, 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 bop. There you go. It's like uh, live action dyna meshing, basically. Just based on the brush size okay useful for many things but again this topology i wouldn't really use for anything real time i would have to re you would have to uh retopologize it right um yeah because it's all kinds of messy it's all kinds of messy all right f again um so i'll just kind of create that main fire few tendrils try to follow the flow of what i imagine fire to be it's going to be tricky with sculpting to make it look like flame and not like you know like a tree bra tree bark or something like that right but uh, that's going to be up to you to make sure um kind of get experience with uh stylization and all that good stuff. As I'm pulling these out, maybe I'll pull a couple from uh, back here. Let's see. Huh. What did I do? Oh, there you go. Let me just pull a couple from over here, maybe make that. Wrap it around like so. 
this to indicate some sort of an updraft. Notice it's not going to be super clean uh, doing it this way. Maybe I can have another one coming up from here. Smooth. Sure. Let's see what those edges are. I'll lose some mass and we'll have to clean this up a little bit later. But for now, it will do just fine. You try to kind of do your best to capture that feel of those flames kind of behaving the way flames behave to the best of our ability, you know. It's still just a script. We have our limitations. Uh, another cool brush, BPI pinch, right? So we can pinch this a little bit, smooth it, pinch, 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 smooth. In case you want to have a little bit of sharper edges there. Do something like this. And you know, I look a little bit like a tree. That's okay. It's okay, we'll do another pass there. Um, okay, so that's one approach to kind of create this sort of flames. Another approach, um, we can add another layer to this because uh, with this kind of thing being on, um, I can probably even scale this up a little bit. Let's do a little bit more of these over there. Uh, towards the end. Uh, okay, so that's one approach using um, uh, using Sculptress Pro mode. Another approach, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this main one. Duplicate, I'm going to hide the others. Or actually, instead of hiding the others, I'm going to leave them on transparent mode because uh, first thing I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to go ahead and blur it. Yeah, I don't need a lot over there, but I do want to have a lot over here. So B, I, N for inflate. Let's give us a bunch more mass over here and you'll see what I'm actually going to do with it. We'll see what I'm actually going to do with it. Because I just want to have B, S H just want to have a little bit of an extra layer. It's going to look slightly or very stylized, but I think it will look pretty cool. I hope That's something like this and works for me. 
Oh, what is it? Snake hook? Um, let's do the uh, add inflate. Just give it a little more P H. Oops. One thing like this. B P I. bit narrower here that bmv you know this is not going to work with uh you notice it goes back to red i just want to encompass this a little bit okay so what i'm going to do with this one is this is going to be the baseline and i'm going to mask out some tendrils of flames that are going around and i'm going to extract them and we'll have just another layer of kind of stylized flame on top of what we have over here <laughs> this looks like uh, hand holding out a middle finger, which is funny. I'm okay. I'm going to keep it. I'm okay with that. Uh, okay. So, uh, go out of ghost transparency. We're actually going to solo this one. So, this is not going to have enough resolution for us to extract what I want to extract. So, what are we going to do? Is we're going to go first to geometry, uh, hit, uh, we're already at Dynamesh. Let's see what this is going to give us. Um,. This is probably fine. Let's polish this real quick. Uh, uh, not poly def uh, deformation, polish by features, just to give it a little bit of smoothness. Polish, polish by features. See if it will smooth this out for us. Maybe relax, do some. No, the resolution is too high. Okay, go out of sculptress mode. I just old school smooth this out a little bit just a little bit get us a little bit of a smoother surface less bumpy i want to well, i do want to have some bumps on this but we'll add that at the end okay um next what i want to do is go over to uh, the mask notice that turned off Scorpius mode I still have some areas to smooth out. It doesn't matter. So uh, with control, I'm just gonna just create a lot of interesting, ah, a lot of interesting shapes to go around. Varying sizes. Just gonna wrap this around. I need the floor at the moment. Auto save, auto save. Just a little bit of interesting uh, shapes. This is again very stylized, and that's okay. I'm okay with that. By the way, this is this can also be a way to add uh, decorations to your weapons and armor, which um, we'll probably go back and uh, re-explore another week. 
And I want to focus this week on um, practicing this kind of energy effect as well as getting ready to uh, pose our characters. This is going to be very stylized, so don't feel obligated to do it this way. Just whatever you feel like doing. This isn't really going to be a, a right or wrong thing and how you interpret that, but I do recommend, you know, kind of studying how other artists choose to do it, finding uh, a way that uh, resonates with you. Uh, and doing it that way as long as it looks good as long as it looks good that's all i care about like tribal tattoos and <laughs> I don't mind that aesthetic at all oops what am I doing right. is fun i hope you have as much fun with this as i am uh, if you're not sure what i'm doing i'm holding control alt to unmask just like control masks control alt unmasks right Uh, it could look pretty interesting. Let's see what turns out. All right. Um, okay, that could be pretty cool. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So, uh, once I have all this area masked, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Subtool. I'm going to 
Uh, this is still on solo, so this is good. What I'm going to do is, and if you remember, this uh, this kind of version of the of uh, of the flame is kind of bigger than the other one, so it's going to be like another layer. And what I'm hoping is to preserve the areas I masked, and uh, then the white areas are going to disappear because I'm going to create a new uh, sub tool for this. So extract uh, thickness. I'm going to make it much smaller. Um, so first, uh, over here we have this little dot, extract surface smoothness, right? We can have this uh, uh, off like this, this is fine, thickness, uh, and the thing with extract is that when we hit it, it's not going to just do it, it's going to give us a preview, okay? This is a preview, because if you notice, you move, it disappears, it's not going to maintain it until we hit accept. Now we do want double because it's going to be uh, both sides, and I'm going to make this... 0.1 less thickness, uh, thin border is fine, um, corner quads, two tries, sure, let's see what that looks like. <laughs> That's a little bit better, and probably even... No, this is fine. Uh, extract, hit accept, and there we go. It's a little large, that's fine. It's a little large, but we can take care of that. Uh, this is just a cool kind of <laughs> deco regardless, right? Um, and it did make it a little bit bigger, so you know that you notice that we don't have a lot of uh, a lot of Flat edges. I'm sorry, a lot of sharp corners like we did before, but it's okay. Um, you know, I do want it a little bit thinner than it actually is. So we're going to go back. Uh, this created a new subtool for us, but the original one is still here, right? And this still has the mask. So we can get rid of this one. Uh, let's get rid of this one. Make sure I delete the correct one because I can't undo this. All right, going back here. Go back to extract. Uh, we'll do the thickness 0 0.005. Hit enter on that. Um, thin border. Yeah, I want the thin border. Uh, okay, and double. That's a double sided. So let's try this one. Hmm. 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 the corner. See if we can get a little sharper corner. No, not at all. I'll keep it like this. And it's going to try to smooth it out a little bit. You're going to lose a little bit here and there, but it's okay. Um, oh, yeah. Hit accept. There we go. I have this. This is a little bit better. Uh, this is a little bit better. Okay. So um, before we do anything else, do I just want to show you what the end result was, right? So if we go out of this, hide this one, then you know you have this added uh, <laughs> stylized layer on top. It's a little thick, it's a little thick, and I do want to add a bunch more detail over there. Um, but that's a start. That's a start for sure. That's a start for sure. So let's see what we want to do to this. We can smooth this out a little bit and that'll make it uh, significantly thinner. You know, uh, it's going to bring it a little bit closer to what we had uh, in mind for this. You see, it's kind of swirly behavior. So we had that, uh, what was like the, that finger that was held up, but I had the masks going around and it looks nice and swirly like that. I enjoy this. I enjoy this quite a bit. Okay, just hitting smooth, just hitting smooth. That's it. I'm going to BPR this just for... Just to capture a little bit of that energy. Again, we showed a couple of different techniques. A couple of different techniques. Um, something else that I want to do is... 
probably go and add the uh, last layer of surface detail. Uh, there's a, there are several ways to do that. That's again, just up to your own interpretation. Um, for me, what I would do is let's go back to that main one. I actually do want to merge a couple of them together. So this one and that one, I want to merge together. So I'm gonna put this right over here and I'm going to, uh, first I'm gonna merge down. First I'm gonna merge down. So merge, merge down. Hit OK, then I want to Dynamesh this. I already had that Dynamesh on, so this is good. Give this a little bit of smoothness, a little bit smoothness, like so. Um, next, what I want to do is BDS. And you can go and um, create kind of these kind of swirly effects one by one. Right, and all these lines. Um, that could be pretty useful. That could be pretty useful to just do this way. Right? Uh, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. Uh, one way to do it is you can mess with alphas. Right? And over here we have all sorts of alphas and we can create custom alphas as well. Um, for my purposes, let's see what this will give us. Mm -hmm. This is a little, a little messy, but I don't mind it. All right, so I'm just gonna just give it a little bit of texture, a little bit of a texture. I'll do this all around it gets to here make sure you have some variation and maybe I'll switch it out to this one just to give it oops let me smooth out some of those extra extra harsh ones I just want to give it a little bit of that, a little bit of texture on here. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can hear the dog bark. We got some company. All right. I'm not being super deliberate right now. This is something that is up to you and how much time you want to spend. I'm just kind of showing you different results. Yeah, that's way too much. Chill out, dog. Chill out. <laughs> I'm going to find that perfect uh, pressure. Actually, I like this current one more, so I'm going to undo a lot of what I did just to go back to being able I know my mind I'll take you outside in a minute undo all of the stuff and then just yes I know Just gonna noodle around this. Just gonna noodle around. There's a little bit of noodling. <laughs> now we can do some more deliberate strokes. But for now, I just wanna have a little bit of that noise, a little bit of that noise. And then we can go. Give it a little bit more of a flow. All right. Mm 
and you'll find that this is uh, kind of similar to doing hair in a lot of ways. Uh, in fact, this uh, similar techniques to this can be used for uh, hair, hair and fur and what have you. All sorts of uh, different surface detail. These are just the tools or at your disposal, but you are the artist. You you find the best use uh, for these different tools. Remember with alt you can do the opposite function and actually bring uh, bring it out rather than take it in. We can alternate between those. And the idea of just trying to <laughs> just to be able to catch a little light and shadow everywhere. It's definitely something you gotta spend that time on to get it to look good. So don't uh, don't settle for what I'm doing, but spend the time. And look at your references, get that inspiration. Uh, so right now it's pretty subtle uh, for this one. What else I want to do? Um, let's see here. Chill out, dog. Not yet, not yet. I know you want to play, but I got to work. All right. Mm -mm -mm. Increase the intensity a little bit. Do another pass. Just to capture uh, a little bit more deeper lines and deeper shadows. Here and there, I don't need to go overboard. I add a little bit of deliberate surface detail here and there as needed. bit of swirlies, as I like to call them. Um, what else do I want? Let's see what else we got here. What's this going to do? Uh, let me change this from the sub to the add. And we can add a few more, more uh, things indicating that kind of smoke puffs, you know? So this could be pretty useful. This could be pretty useful, actually. Adding a little bit of that, making it look more smoky. I like this. I like this more than the other one, but that's okay. You know, experimentation. Experimentation is key to making, uh, to discovery. Experimentation is key to discovery. I like this a lot. We can make it slightly smaller on here. 
look all uh, a little bit lumpy. And I can make it larger on here. And I'm just breaking up those spheres a little bit to make them look like there's way more spheres. Because if you look at clouds, it's basically just a, a whole lot of tiny and various size spheres. Just kind of creating a sort of an effect. It's getting a little bit stylized there, but that's okay. Make that dip in a little bit here. You know, this is this area is starting to look like smoke a little bit, see? Um, that's a start. That's a start. Mm -mm -mm. Let me see. B, I, N. Let's see if Inflate's going to help us around there. Around that base a little bit. I can flake because it, it looks even more like those uh, smoke clouds that are kind of going into each other like this. Now we have this tendril, these tendrils, and this is good. Um, again, it's going to look real ugly if you inflate like this, so you're going to have to make sure you dynamish. Make sure. Preserve those edges as much as you can. It's moving and, uh, and pinching as needed. Right now I'm just kind of smoothing that edge. And again, with smooth you kind of lose mass if you have a cylinder type thing. And that's exactly what I want uh, around the corners. Right now it's going to look a little ugly until we dynamesh it. And once we do, it's going to look like this. Okay, now it's a nice kind of continuous. Uh, I enjoyed this a lot here. Uh, and again, the, the tendrils of the fire are always going to look a little weird, but yeah, you can capture a little bit of this. And then if you want, we have that extra layer right here that we can give a similar sort of treatment. And in fact, you know, uh, I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to hold off on dynameshing this. Uh, because I want to actually merge them and then Dynamesh. Uh, but I want to give uh, this one we don't need. Uh, but I want to give this one a little bit of a texture treatment as well. Uh, let's see how it will work with uh, BDS. So and I went to add. And I just want to add a little bit of a little bit of just variation all over the place. A little bit of variation all over the place. I'm doing this by hand because uh, I don't want it to be even all around. And we'll just kind of break things up for us a little bit. See, I like that. I like that quite a bit. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm enjoying this more than the lines. So I know in uh, section one, we did the lines more, but I actually like these dots way, way more for fire. Way, way more. So uh, keep that in mind. This fire is going to look much better than that first attempt, I think. Or I hope. I can only help. Every time you do something, you get a little bit better at it. The more we do it, the better we get. But yeah, I want to nicely mess this up. Give it that energy feel. This chaotic, chaotic uh, energy. Just, you know, just mingling all these particulates. Uh mingling with the air and just kind of flowing all around and look cool and yeah and this is just um we used a fire that's going in the direction right for this but uh if you have any kind of energy in your scene and yeah, it's going to be up to you to just capture that energy because fire coming out of a flamethrower is not going to look the same as fire uh, a candle fire or torch or something like that or dumpster fire <laughs> in case you wanted to have a dumpster fire in your scene for whatever reason right and who wouldn't there we go we got a little bit better uh, a little bit better of this and capture those tones uh, a lot nicer in my opinion now we can have sharper here and there if you want uh it's gonna be up to you how much uh how perfectionistic you want to get with this for me for the purposes of this demonstration i think i'm uh, reaching a point where i'm pretty happy with it so uh let's go ahead and unsettle this uh, so we have those two yeah, this is going to look pretty cool, I think. Okay, so uh, next up, I would like to dynamesh them. So first I'm going to merge. I'm going to pick that top one. I'm going to merge down like so, and then dynamesh. And there we are. There you go. I love all of this chaos, all of this chaos. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Yes. Pretty happy with this. And, uh, you know, ZBrush doesn't really have a texture that's going to look really good, but I found, uh, well, what did I use? <laughs> this uh, silver one. And then I gave it like uh, an orangish thing, orangish tint. Uh, you know, uh, fire usually got a Fresnel effect. That's what I would do for when I'm doing particle effects. And what, what Fresnel is, is just it makes it lighter around the edges, right? The outer edges when it curves. And, um, and darker in the middle, which is the opposite of this. I'm sure, actually, um, I'm thinking ZBrush has something similar. Yeah, something like this, actually, might be cool. But I'll have to tweak the colors. Um, the outline. Yeah, you can play with these materials for sure. Um, <laughs> that's kind of cool, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I might need to get a custom ZBrush material. Yeah, it's pretty dope. I just need to be able to, and there, there's ways to uh, to manipulate the the colors of the materials, but I'm not. I don't want to spend too much time on it for this assignment. But yeah, you can actually totally get a nice uh, Fresnel effect in here. Even one of those metal materials is gonna look pretty cool. It's like dark dark really really dark fire um <laughs> we got more cartoony flat color just a silhouette <laughs> uh yeah i love playing with these materials this is fun uh, i wonder if i could find one that would i don't know this one was kind of close but i want to um I want to make the middle less dark and the out more yellow, uh, but it, this is only going to let me control the 
the outer one, the outer one. So let's see. Uh, what was it right here, right? Let's see. Um, let's see if it's gonna let me modify this material. So the intensity for that first one. B is not gonna let me do this. I'm gonna have to mess with this. Uh, I'll just save it. <laughs> it's like crazy hot smoke or something. Uh, anyway, this is pretty much what I got for y'all for that uh, uh, cool sculpted fire effect. Uh, so for section uh, for section two, uh, I'm gonna need you to practice uh, by making three of these. In uh, section one, I think it was everybody except Sam and Raisa uh, practice some more on these. Uh, yeah. So yeah, this is fun. Hopefully you have fun with it. Yeah, no, no clear right and wrong. Just kind of play with the shapes and uh, be creative with it. This is this is definitely uh, one place where we can just be creative. There's not going to be like, oh, this is the right anatomy. This is the wrong anatomy, right? This is just however your brain interprets those shapes. And try to capture that energy it's gonna look pretty awesome hopefully so yeah just capture those shapes look for those s curves you know make sure that it's smaller as it comes out here and bigger over here make sure it's got that forward momentum uh that just kind of starts to dissipate as it reaches this end and starts to go up you know uh, and yeah that's what i got for you uh please have a uh safe weekend if you're watching this on the weekend or after the the next class and uh yeah hopefully this helps thank you and until next time be well